Today we're being joined by Hayley Bitterfeld from the West Perth Waffle W Football Club. Hayley, thanks for coming on. It's all right. Thanks for having me. No, it's any time. Now, normally I tell everyone, Hayley, to tell us a bit about themselves. You can tell us a bit about yourself, but you've had a pretty good few weeks, Hayley. You won the league best and first by a whopping, I think it was 21 votes or thereabouts um, in the league BNF in the Rogers Cup. Um, and then on the weekend, Preps just gone. You won a premiership. Must be a pretty good week or two for you. Yes, it's been amazing. I'm very happy. It's been pretty, pretty good. Yeah. That's very good. So uh, tell us a bit about your, your football journey. Hey, we'll, we'll get back to that stuff in a second. But uh, tell us a bit about your footy journey, Haley, and uh, what got you into footy and what type of player you are. Um. Well, my brother is probably the one who got me into footy. I watched him play Oz Kick. He's my little brother, <laughs> and yeah. I used to think, "Oh, wow, he looks pretty cool." So I decided to join. Um, a boys football club and I'm a girl so they never passed to me so I thought oh f this I hate this whatever <laughs> and then um there was a girls league I joined in year seven and I loved it so much I played for a few years and I think when I was in year nine that's yeah. when I got sort of picked up by West Perth and I played so this year would have been my third year so okay I started in year nine mm-hmm that's good. So, obviously, as you mentioned, joining West Perth in Year 9, how did that opportunity, Hayley, come about to join in the club? Um, well, I just, like, I don't even know. Like, I just, so on one of my games for Brighton, I used to play for Brighton Seahawks, mm -hmm. um, obviously one of the coaches for West Perth had come down and then my, like, Brighton coaches go, oh, well, you just got picked for West Perth, so basically see you later and um, you're going to go <laughs> train with them, whatever. <laughs> But it just happened so suddenly. So, yeah. mm. so how has that step up been for you from local footy to now play at a high, higher level? Um, at first it was scary because obviously I knew that there was better people than me. But mm -hmm. the coaching was so amazing. I've grown so much as a player. Like I've gotten so much better. And now I mm. like I I would never look back. Like I've grown so much as a player and like watching community games, you can see how like, different it is. But yeah. I'm so grateful for that, and so many girls are getting into it as well. So it's very, very different, but it's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. What do you take your form into this year, Haley? Also, this year you were terrific, as you just mentioned, win the league BNF as well, and having a good year in general. Um, what do you put that down to? Like, what did you work on in the previous preseason to get to this? Was there was a consistency? How how did you put this form to? Yeah. Um, what I really wanted to focus on because in my first year I was always a two handed drop. I always mm -hmm. dropped the hand, um, dropped the ball with two hands. So that really yeah. affected my kicking, I guess. So in my off season for last year and the year before, I made sure that I would just focus on my one headed drop. And now I've got that down pack. So my kicking has really improved. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously a big factor. Yeah. Um, and I also worked on my fitness because I wanted to be in midfield this year, which is what I got. Yeah. So I yep. need to work my fitness to be able to stay in the field longer, you know, whatever. And confidence. Confidence was my number one thing. So I used to think, oh, I'm not good enough to be in midfield, whatever. But um, <laughs> once I played my first few games, I was like, oh, wow, I'm actually actually pretty good at this. So I got confident, more confident yeah. in myself. And I think that really made an impact because I just believed in myself, I guess, and took more opportunities and stuff. So, yeah. yeah good. So would you say um... – Midfield is a position that you always wanted to get into, Haley, or was that something that just come about this year? Um, and I'm clearly you're glad the move happened because so many good things are happening for you so far this yeah. year. Yeah, um, I played forward last year and I liked it, but I hated like not being able to like to give it to the forwards. I don't know how to explain that. It sounds so silly, but oh, like I wanted to be in the midst of everything. Like I feel like within mid, you're you're in back, you're in forward. I guess sometimes, and you're just everywhere. And I loved being near the ball, so I just wanted to be near the ball at all costs. I guess so. That's why I wanted to be yeah. in midfield. That's good, and what a, clearly what a good move it's been for you and the team as well. Um, so what would you say overall though is your biggest strength as a footballer? Um, I would say maybe my speed. Um, mm -hmm. I think I'm a pretty fast player. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe like even, I don't know, my speed's definitely one thing that my coaches always talk about is <laughs> get it to, and I like going on the outside. I reckon yeah. I'm really good like in feedback position. Like I like being on the outside and running and mm -hmm. kicking it to leads and stuff like that. So I think that's my biggest strength, my speed, if I'm being honest. Yeah. So yeah. That's good. And, Obviously, now I've been 18, so 
is AFLW something, Haley, that you would love to strive to get into one day? And also, if that opportunity didn't happen for this upcoming season, would um, pushing for the league side be something you would aim for next year? Um, yes, definitely. Um, it wasn't – AFLW wasn't really in the picture until maybe this year, mm-hmm. until I realised I actually – I might have, if I try hard, I might yeah. actually have an opportunity, you never know. So yes, right. um, my dad's the one who said, you got to really try this year, Hayley, because you never know. But anything yep. can happen. So I guess I'll just try my hardest and whatever happens, happens. But league, mm-hmm. I definitely want to play league. I mean, I will miss my Rogers girls, but league is such a good opportunity. And, yeah, that's one thing I want to do for next year. Yeah, that's good. So, um, okay, so we'll go now to the league best and fairest on Hayley. Um, did you know going in that you may have been a chance – or clearly you were contending, you won it by a fair bit. How did you go going into that night, though, Hayley? And how were the teammates around you? Did they start giving you the nudge from round one onwards that, you know, you've got this in the bag, you were so far ahead of the rest? How did you take all that in? Well – um, I'm a, I'm obviously my biggest critic. I went in there because I'm obviously captain of Rogers. I went in there just thinking, oh, I'm just here as a captain, you know, like to support my girls, whoever gets votes. I genuinely did not think I was in the running at all. I'm being completely honest. Um, but all my friends were like, nah, you've got a chance. I reckon you'd win. I'm like, I just sort of brush it off like, nah, whatever. I wouldn't really think about it. And then, um, um, like coaches and league girls were like, oh, you got your speech ready, whatever. On the night, no, I don't say that, guys, whatever. And then, obviously, I looked at the board and I was like, oh, wow, I'm up there on first round. And then I stayed up there the whole time and I was like, oh, I genuinely did not expect that win at all. And I was freaking out on the stage because I had nothing planned. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, before we get to the stage, because I definitely want to ask you about that, um, you know, obviously how the – obviously, I watched the whole stream, obviously, being from Vic, obviously not there. But so I watched the stream and how they – Run it, as you know, clearly they um obviously that that leaderboard midway or something like that. Um, and then as you said, you see your name pop up. At that point, then did you feel like, well, clearly you're a chance, you're on top. But um, did you feel like this is actually a reality and this generally is a good chance to happen? Yeah. Um, I like I just hit me. I was like, oh my god, I'm I'm gonna win this. Like I'm gonna get off and everyone's gonna know my name or whatever. <laughs> um, and I think I just I was happy, obviously. But I was also excited because it was just like such a good opportunity because people like will know my name and I'll get recognised, whatever. And it's mm. just like, you know, like people like Daisy Pierce were there. Yes. Um, so like people like that know who I am. So I, I was mm. very excited about that. Yeah. How how was the speech? Now, obviously, we're doing this and you're going well so far in the early days. But on that stage, you know, more eyes in that moment, just staring at you, however many thousand there were there. Um Obviously, that I'm sure is much uh, more nervous than this, as this is one on one and no one is here. But yeah. um, how was that for you, though? It was a big shock, I think, because like the lights were coming this way. So it was like dark in like the audience. So I couldn't really see who was there until I hopped onto the stage. And nah, the lights yeah. are shining onto them. And I, I literally, mm-hmm. I think I literally audibly gasped. I was like, oh my God. And then I had to start speaking because there were so many people there. I don't think I've, I've yeah. ever spoken to that many people before so it was a bit scary but yeah it, it's good though sometimes especially your age or any age for that matter to kind of get that experience because you know now you kind of know at least with that quantity of numbers what it's going to be like every time and i mean you can be so experienced at, at doing stuff and the nerves can get to you at times it just happens but you went right the first time it could be good for future events if you have to do it again in whatever capacity yeah, I did have to do it again on the grand final. That did not end well. Oh, yes. I was I was not prepared for that, but <laughs> pretty bad. Yeah, so okay, let's talk about that grand final then, Haley. Um, must have been a pretty cruisy win. Now, also, it was thirteen to zero. I think the top of my head, something like that. Yeah. Um, how were those conditions? I've seen the photos, Haley, and some footage of it. God, that looked terrible. Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> um. Yeah, it was a shame because our coaches were very excited for us to play, like, some pretty good footy, but obviously that was a bit, um, yeah, that did not happen. And my coach was saying, I think there was 80 stoppages Mm. the whole game because obviously no one could get the ball out. I think maybe, Mm. um, like, three people got, like, 10 steps (laughs) running with the ball. 
that was oh, the yeah. most ever probably. Um, other than that, it was like handball or a kick straight away because it was just you couldn't hold on to that ball because it would just fall out of your hands. Right, it and that's not a Perth. That's not a typical Perth day, Haley, to be muddy and crap and puddles and everything like that. That ain't Perth. No, last year it was sunny. It was beautiful. It was like that's why I was expecting it to be. And then I rocked up and I was like, oh my god, it was like a puddles. It was horrible. Mm. Yeah. Now overall, though, Haley, how were you in the lead up to the grand final? Obviously, you had that league being after Monday night, and then the grand final on the Sunday. So, how were you between? Please, let's just go from so Haley the couple of days before the B and F night, compared to after the B and F to the grand final. How were you nerve wise for both events? Um, for the waffle night i was more excited yeah. i wasn't too nervous because i genuinely thought i didn't have anything like no one was going to really talk to me like i was just going to be there having a nice night mm. um and then after it um oh sorry before it for the grand final i was obviously nervous but i was so excited like i think the excitement ruled over nervousness just to play one last game for the season with the girls and have a good game i knew it was going to be a good game um and mm. um and then after the waffle w awards night i was very nervous to play because mm. i knew i think i th sort of thought people would have their eyes on me yeah. being best and fairest yes. um so that did put a lot of pressure on me i tried not to think about it but yeah, yeah. obviously that's one factor that's going to be in the back of my mind that all these people are watching me mm -hmm. um and then yeah I was, I was quite <laughs> nervous after that because I knew all well, their eyes would be on me, best and fairest. Yeah, that's right. And, I mean, look, it's a credit to yourself to kind of, you know, do that. And as you said, obviously not doing much public speaking, especially at that level with the amount of people, there, as you said. And then to do, do the similar thing again when the grand final uh, presentations and stuff happen. Um, how were the... I know I'm backtracking a little bit, but how was the teammates on your table when you won the best of us? I'm sure they were saying it from halfway through the season, if not at the start. Yeah, my friend um, who I went with, I bring a plus one. She was she's a oh, yeah. member of our team, Bree Porritt. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah. But she, so we had these people come up to us and say, "Who do you think's going to win?" Whatever. She was like, "Oh, mm -hmm. Haley Bitterfeld's going to win," and I was like, "Oh, whatever." I said someone else, and then she knew. Like even before the votes were up, she had her phone out filming. And I was like, <laughs> like it's not going to happen, and she was like a proud Facebook mom. Every single moment, she was taking. She was so proud of me, and she was That's taking good. photos of the leaderboard and filmed the whole thing. And then people on the other side of the table, they were like, "Oh, you got to get your speech ready. You're going to get up there, whatever." <laughs> Yeah. And, yeah, they were so supportive. I couldn't ask for better people to sit with. They were so lovely and proud and that's it made awesome. me so happy. That's, well, that's awesome, and that's exactly why you want, Hayley. I mean, um, if I'm going to backtrack to my own now, but this is a different example. You were talking about – you mentioned there about teammates filming for you. When I had my own and um, my own cricket one, I knew I was in contention, and I, I filmed the whole thing. Well, I vlog everything anyway for the here, this channel, obviously. So I was filming for myself. But – the reactions, though, Haley, I would have cut some things out if I didn't win, if you know what I mean. Because, you know, you think yeah. you're going to win. You're in that mode. And I won by a vote. So I only win by 21 oh. votes. Like, So, you know, I knew I started really well. And I wasn't bad in the second half. But I knew the other person that would be a genuine chance at a stronger back half. And then he started getting votes and votes. I'm like, oh, God. And the last game, I knew he wouldn't get three or two. So I'm like, okay, he surely doesn't get more than one. Or this is rigged. And anyway, he got one, so I won by one. So, whew, uh, the year prior, I had lost by a vote. So oh, I know well, at least you, you got your you got your your starlight. Absolutely, that's it's good. Good nights for sure. It's good to see your teammates get around it. Um, all right. So speaking of teammates, Haley, who are some of your favourite teammates at the club? Oh, I literally love every single one of them. This is so hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, some of the ones that I tend to like hang out with outside of footy are more like Taya Nicholson, um, mm -hmm. Renee Bannon Heaver, Brie Porritt, um, Lexi Strawn. Yeah. Um, those are really the main ones that I hang out with outside of school. Mm -hmm. Ellie. I have so many. There's too many. 
Very Everyone's true. Everyone's so close in our team this year. It's amazing. The bond is just mm. so good this year. That's good. Um, is there any players from the league side that you kind of like try and lean for advice from or coaches and or just people in general that you want to lean for some advice at the step that you want to get to next? Um, I do um, look up to some of the league girls. Um, mm-hmm. Not some in particular. I think the whole group. Yeah. I don't yeah. know how to explain it, but, like, I look up to literally every single one of them. Like, mm-hmm. if one was to come talk to me, I'm like, oh, my God, there's a league player coming to talk to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the main person I would look up to is probably Emily Bennett. Yeah. Because she was the captain. It's such a like mm-hmm. an amazing thing to be a captain. She's always has such great things to say. She's so motivational and just, yeah, she really mm-hmm. doesn't know that, but I look up to her a lot. I well, love good. her speak to her team and the way she plays. It's, yeah, it's pretty cool. That's good. I, I'm going to clip this part of the conversation and then, then I'm going to tag Emily. She, I've had her on before, so she'll probably see it anyway. But, uh, yeah, so there it goes. Now she'll know. If she oh. didn't know, now she'll know. Now, there's a lot of teammate questions, Hayley, that I love asking. This is one of my favourite ones. So who loves the limelight, the attention, the camera? Oh. Oh, and they can't get enough and they know what they're doing, Hayley, when the cameras are around. I'm going to say Lene. Lene Van and Heva. There's so many photos of her everywhere. Yeah. The whole celebration. She knows exactly what she's doing. Whenever she sees the camera guy, she always gives him a smile mm. or whatever. She, she loves she loves the attention she does. She's a funny one. That's good. Well, she's learning from her sister Kayla. Then now, when I did venture down to Perth, Kayla was on my big golfing challenge I had with about 16 other players in the league's competition. And Kayla had some good celebrations in there. So it makes sense. And her sister, younger sister is copying her traits as well. Yes. Yes. They very much copy each other. <laughs> very clearly they do. All right. So, um, okay. Where was I? Um, all right. Best chatterbox of the club. Oh, chatterbox. Well, when they're together, Lene, Lene again and Taya Nicholson. They mm-hmm. do not, the amount of times they've gotten us in trouble is not even funny. The amount of yeah. laps we've had to do because of them is not even funny. Oh. But it's 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 funny, not in the moment when we're mad at them for talking too much, but afterwards we giggle about it and it's, they're pretty funny. That's right. Uh, it's good. It's, it's one of the, yeah, like you said, it's one of those things where you're like, in the moment, like, you, you stupid, you know what, and then, um, but then after, then you go, yeah, see, remember what you made us do, you clown, or so whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Oh, that's good. All right. Uh, quiet, loudest and quietest teammates? Hmm. Quietest would have to be Sophie Fisher. Mm-hmm. Or um, I would say Jamara Woods, but she's gotten much chattier this season, which is nice. Yeah. Um, loudest would have to be Lene again. She's just. That's she's okay. So, she's so loud and funny and loves the limelight. She's everything. She it's, just it's right. loves the attention, yeah, well, I guess. Mm, well, I mean, if it's true, it's true. I guess it, it's it just what it is. And something yeah. like I say, it's not a bad thing. This it can be, but it can also be a good thing as well. And I mean, really, you need it, especially from the chatterbox side of things. I mean, loud. You do need to talk on a football field, clearly, right? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, even um, Samara on the field in training. Samara mm-hmm. Sally, um, she's more louder, um, cause, but she doesn't really train with us because she got up to league. Oh, yeah. Um, then she gets put down to Rogers, but in game she's very loud and it's good. It's good in the midfield to have um, a loud person, but, yeah. That's right. If you were stuck on a deserted island with teammates, Hayley, who are you bringing and not bringing and why? Oh. <laughs> um, I... Oh, this is a really difficult question. I'm trying to think of all my teammates. Yeah. I think I would bring um, Lexi. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because she's always, like, coming up with these wacky ideas and cool ideas. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like she'd be able to help me survive or something because <laughs> she has good cool ideas. And I wouldn't bring um, Brie because she's always hurting herself. <laughs> she's she's always hurting herself and she's always complaining because she's hurt herself. So in the first like five five minutes, she would have hurt herself and that wouldn't hear the end of it or something. 
Yeah. Uh, well, again, if it, if it happens, it happens. Now, if your teammates, Haley, were to describe you in a word or a sentence, how do you reckon they would describe you? I think I'm also quite loud. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm one of the louder ones as well. Yeah. I'd be like loud and I think I'm, I actually think I'm quite funny. I think I'm quite a funny person. I make people laugh. Sometimes yeah. some people don't laugh sometimes or whatever. Um, I think funny, loud, and some I can be annoying sometimes. So funny, loud, annoying. I mean, you just described everything that people say of me. Funny, or actually, I think I am. Like you said about yourself, I think I am loud and annoying. But I don't care what they think about that. Yeah, now, is there any particular jokes that you've got? You say you you think you're funny. Is there anything that you that you like a go to joke that you have or go to saying or something? Um, I think the joke at the moment is with Lexi because she usually goes for goals and she doesn't point her toe at the direction that she wants it. Oh, so it yeah. goes somewhere else. So we call yep. her the ballerina and she needs to point her toes. And on the grand mm-hmm. final, she finally did it and she t- did a little ballerina spin. Ah. That's one of the jokes that's going at the moment. It was pretty funny. So, yeah. All right. Oh, it's it, it works now, or it worked in the on the big stage. So that's the main thing, I guess. Now, yeah. also, you talk about goal celebrations, Haley. Do you have a go-to goal celebration that you do? Uh, if I'm being honest, not really, because I don't. Re- I don't know if I've kicked many goals this year. Oh, I'm not sure. Seems, but they're they usually like on the run goals. So I'll oh, go yeah. like there'll be a teammate near me. I'll sort of like you know do a little cheer, and then I'll always give my teammates like a hug or whatever, yeah. and. Like, I just love getting around everyone after they celebrate. I think that's my main thing, just getting around everyone, saying well done, giving hugs and stuff. So. Uh, very nice. That's good. Nice and basic. Sometimes it's the best way to go about it sometimes. Um, and has there been any goal celebrations that you've seen anyone pull? It doesn't even have to be your own team, Haley. It can just be in general. And that, that you feel is a bit interesting in a good or a bad way. Like, gee, that, I, I, didn't, I couldn't think of that. Or, gee, that's good or that's odd. Is there anything that comes to mind? Yeah. Um, I think one I saw on in, I mean, maybe streamer sports. Oh, I'm yeah. not sure, but mm-hmm. someone kicked a goal, and they were on the run, and everyone. I didn't know what they were doing at first, but they were going like at their boots and going like oh, this yeah. and blowing it out. And I was like, "What the <laughs> hell are they doing?" And I realised they were just blowing it out because they're on fire or whatever. I thought that was, oh, cool. that yeah. was very smart. Mm. I thought that was very smart. So interesting. Yeah. Haven't haven't heard of that one before. That's very interesting. All right. So now, mark of goal of the year, Haley. Which one would you rather do, and why? Again, it can be as unrealistic as you like. It can be if you do do one, that's great. But if you could pick one, uh, what would you like to do more? I think mark of the year. My dream ever is to get like an awesome specky. I always mm-hmm. like to think about like getting an awesome specky. I reckon that I would like to get mark of the year. I'll let the forwards do um, goal of the year, whatever. I'll take a mark of the year. Uh, fair enough. Would you be one, Haley, to post it yourself if you were to pull a mark or goal of the year contender? I'm not sure. I, I like to stay, like, humble. I think I'm a pretty humble okay. person. I, I don't post anything about me getting the best and fairest. I just let, I let the That's others true. around me post it. Um, yeah. But I'd let others around me post it and be like, oh, yeah, that's me, whatever. But I don't think I'd, I'd bloat about it and gloat about it, whatever the word is. Uh, that's, well, that's the word. That's fair enough. I mean, if if people started sharing it, would you be one to, like, kind of reshare the share or not even that? No, I don't think even that. I was going to when my boyfriend posted that I got oh. the best and fairest I literally did it and I deleted it. I was like, no, that's too cocky. I can't do that. Everyone's probably already seen it already. They're probably sick of it. So <laughs> I literally deleted it off my like, two minutes after because I overthought wow. it. I was like, no, people are probably sick of seeing me everywhere. So I'm not I'm not <laughs> going to post that on my story. <laughs> I found it. But then again, though, I mean, not many people can say they can win a league, being at brown low, whatever you want to call it. Not many people can say they've done that, though. And it's not like yeah. it's a weekly thing or a yearly thing. Yeah, that's what my um my friends are all saying. Like, you need to be proud of yourself. Like, mm. I am proud of myself. Like, I'm proud, but I don't want people to be like, oh, my God, can she just shut up about that? But mm. I probably should. I probably should be proud of myself. But, mm. yeah, well, if Mar- I get whispers, best yes. I'll post it. And oh, there we go. There I'll we go. Okay. 
Okay, so we're going to remember that. If I get that, if I get it, I'll post it on my story. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now, that's locked and locked. I've timestamped that, so that's going to be added in as well. So there we go. So if you do win it, I mean, if you win the league BNF by that many votes, you really should, realistically, if you go by that, you should. So I'll, whenever that BNF is, I'll be waiting. Time, time will be waiting. <laughs> Wait for my story. I'll tag you so you can see it. <laughs> Right, that that'll be good. Sounds good. All right, so uh, where are we now? All right, so oh, all right. Now we're gonna go to the hot topic food questions, Haley. Um, I don't understand what's wrong with people in Australia. They get so worked up, right, over so many certain pronunciations, spelling, or just type of foods that people like to mix things with, etc. So, but this one, this is so there'll be six food questions. How it works is how I would answer it and see if you can answer it the same way so it's out of six the lowest anyone's ever got is a bunch of people on three um mm -hmm. only 13 people out of probably out of 150 plus people have only gotten six questions correct to how i would 13 only unacceptable a lot of people get close but close and only eight people have said the illogical wrong answer for this first question because there's only one answer and it is chicken palmy is it a palmy or is it something else it's palmy. I know yeah. the other one. The other one is yeah. Palmer. I've never heard of Palmer in my life. Um, I always chicken palmy. No. That's right. Good job. One, one for one. I, I, you know what I say, Hallie, to the clowns to say that or any other variation. It's spell it out and pronounce it. Palmy. I. Spell it. I. It ain't any other letter. Yes, exactly. Good job. And you. No Perth people have ever said anything outside of Palmy, so you kept that trend going. So that's good. All right. Uh, pineapple on a pizza, yes or no? No. Good. Two for two. I'm, I'm a bit worried now every time I ask these people this that particular question because I always get a lot of yeses the last few months, and I'm a bit concerned about that because it's yuck. Uh, no. Do you like actually, No. No. Good. Good answer. I like that. All right. Uh, tomato sauce, cupboard or fridge? I put it in the cupboard. Good. She, I did not give you the answer. Just for clarity, I didn't give Haley the answers at all. Good start. For this experience. is just what my family does. My family just doesn't put it in the fridge. Well, that's good. They know what they're doing, obviously. <laughs> all right, so that's three for three. All right, favourite food? It has to be um some sort of pasta. Good. I love good. pasta. It's either like a carbonara. Yeah. Sometimes I don't really feel like a carbonara if I've had too much because sometimes when I love a food, I'll have it way too much until I'm sick of it. Or like yep. um like oh, a yeah. arrabbiata. Do you know what that is? Like arrabbiata? I've heard of it. What is it exactly though? It's like a tomato-based pasta, but it's like spicy and it has like sausage in it. Oh, yeah. oh well, this you, that's just even better. I like spicy food as well, so that's that's cheap. Again, I haven't given her the script. There is no, no script. No script. There we go. You heard it. No, right, four for four. That's that's really nice. Now that you made you made me hungry thinking of that. Um, how do I food you don't like, Haley? Four for four so far. Foods I don't like. Um, pineapple is one. Good, like smart. Yep. yep. Um, what else don't I like? I don't like figs. I hate oh, fig. I hate mm -hmm. fig. Um. And I don't know what else. I'm I'm actually not that fussy. My dad would say otherwise, but uh, yeah, I'm really not that fussy. Maybe corn. I don't really like corn. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. I don't hate it, but no, I don't. Yeah, I'm not going to for it. Put it that way. Yeah, I'm not going to. I don't put it on my zambreras or whatever because I just don't mm. like it. Yeah, I think That's, those are my top three. Not there. Like you them. go. Good answers there. So it's five for five, and you just briefly mentioned some breweries, which actually might answer this last question. Favorite takeaway slash restaurant slash food place. Okay, I'm gonna do takeaway first. Yeah. Because I have like two separate things. Takeaway yep. would have to be Zimbreros. I love nice. it. Yeah. And then um like a restaurant would have to be something called it's called Italians in okay. um I think it's Morley. It's the mm -hmm. best, best pasta I've ever had there. Mm -hmm. Best arrabbiata. That's why I got to like my arrabbiata. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Italians in Morley or Zembro and Zembro for takeaway. That's good. Six for six. You nailed it. Now, 
not many, only I think one or two people have got a bonus point for answering all six questions correctly. So let's see if we can join the leaderboard of like one other person here. Um, what is your go to sombrero's order? Okay, I'm going to go. Uh, okay, this is different. This is different. Yep. So what I do is I get um, a burrito bowl with lamb, the marinade so, lamb. Yeah. I have all the relishes except for corn. As I said, I don't like corn. Yes. With yep. jalapenos as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I get chipotle and garlic sauce. Mm hmm and I get a bag of corn chips on the side so I can dip it in and eat it with my corn oh. chips. Again, I'm giving you a bonus point. You're now the third person to get a bonus point. I think it's the third, second or third anyway. Good job. Uh, it's like you're just reading out what I would say. Um, so good job, Haley. Love it. All right. Thank you. No worries. No, the next one here I got for you is, uh, okay. So this is the part where... We get some interesting questions here. They're completely random. Um, mm -hmm. Some of them are, which sometimes can bring some interesting answers. Okay, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Um, I think it would be to go back in time. Mm -hmm. Because I literally was thinking about this the other day. I don't know why. Because yeah. every single game I have, I want to go back in time and think I could have done that. So I'll go back in time and I'll do it. So mm. I like, yeah, I want to go back in time and like, change things. So yeah. mm. Wouldn't we all love to go back in time and change some things that happen? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, that would be very good. Um, okay. Hmm. What food do you find is the hardest to stay away from during the season or do you just have it anyway? Okay, the food that is hardest to stay away during the season would have to be a meat box from a kebab place. Oh, yeah. Do you know what that is? Uh, kind of, yep. It's it's like, yeah, it's like a chips with shaved meat on it with sauce. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, like, I literally, because I used to work at a kebab place, so I used to have them for dinner. So yeah. bad. <laughs> but they're not good for you. So. I try to yeah. stay away from those, even though I love them so yeah. much. But I actually didn't have one this season. I was pretty proud of myself. I think that's what got me into Zimbreros because basically yeah. the same thing, I guess, just healthier. That's that's right. It's a, something. It's like it's like a, something is trying. You're trying to remind yourself of the things that you like, but a healthier version of it in a way. So yeah, that's that's good enough. Um, favorite app on your phone. Favorite app? It would have to be Instagram because mm, you can not, message people, you can watch Instagram reels, you can watch people's stories. I feel like you can do anything on Instagram, so probably my favorite. And Instagram was are funnier than TikToks, so they're better. Yes, I don't care about TikToks. I'm glad you said that. Now you may like it, but like I like that you prioritize that higher. I mean, I've never ever understood the appeal of it. I, I've gone as far forced in a while, well, not really forced, in a joking way I was forced to, come on, just do it type thing. Mm -hmm. I made the about three years ago and or maybe two years and haven't touched it since. Not interested. Mm. Yeah, I like sometimes I'll feel like I'll go, I go on TikTok for more like things that I want to like look up, like look up some good recipes or whatever. Then it'll come yes. up with good stuff. If I want to have a good laugh or get entertained, I'll go on Instagram Reels because they're much, much better. I agree. There's some good ones you can get a good laugh out of as well. All right. Now, who would you say, Hayley, go back to footy for a second, who do you feel is the toughest opponent individually as a player or a team that you had to match up on? On a – in a different so team? So, a player, if there's not a particular player you can think of, just a team. Uh, the most difficult team would have to be East Frio. Mm -hmm. um, the first game that we versed them this year, we were down, I think, five goals at half time. Oh, and okay. pooping ourselves is an understatement. We were very scared. Yeah. Um, we ended up winning by three points. Don't know how, honestly. Mm -hmm. But 
they were our toughest team. I was petrified of versing them again in the yeah. finals, but we managed to get the win. Um, but it was still a very tough game. So, yeah. mm. Nice. And five goals down at half time and still get the win. That's that's nice. That's yeah. a, that is a good feeling to have for sure. What AFL, AFLW team do you support? Um, Fremantle Dockers. Rio, okay. I was mm-hmm. slightly hoping West Coast because of what's just happened and they could have brought up the Adam Simpson stuff, but okay. So, Freo, oh, no, obviously, no. go on. Derby's coming up soon. Talk to me about that. My boyfriend's That's more right. into what's happening with Adam Simpson and everything, how an article saying bye-bye. Whatever yeah, that was, that was that's, that, that was pretty bad. I yeah, that was that one, bad. actually. Yeah, and then uh, speaking about reels on Insta um, and or wherever, seen the, did you see the one where um, – he gave the, some of those journeys that write that crap a drive by on the way out. Yes. Was it the one about his 300th article? Yeah, article. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that one. That was pretty, that was pretty good of him, pretty brave of him. Yeah. Good. I, I was rooting for him. I was like, yeah, go on. That was this pretty good. The restrictions they have. If Simo had said that while he was the coach still, he probably would have got in trouble or fined. But now that he's parted ways, um, it doesn't. Oh, it does still matter, but not doesn't matter as much. I yeah, feel like they yeah. they're allowed to say things like that. He's not abusing him. He's not threatening him. He's not swearing at him. I mean, things like that. I feel like you should be allowed to say that. There's and they do drive bys yeah. all the time. Just it's normally the other way around. It's the journo's giving them the drive bys. But uh, yes, it was yeah, pretty good to see that. I, I thought that was pretty funny. Well, Simo yeah. to do that. Anyway. So yeah, okay, so. Pretty- so Freo Haley, um, must be pretty proud of how the men's team so far is going. Yes. Oh my god! Don't even get me started. That's what I talk about. I'm oh, so go on. Say, say about the Dockers. Go on. Um. Well, when I, I remember when I was in, I think year eight, um, mm-hmm. the Eagles were doing tremendously well, and the yep. Dockers were not doing very well at all. Yeah, um, and I would get so mm-hmm. much. Talk from all these Eagles supporters, like, oh, where's Freo on the ladder, whatever. And I couldn't yeah. say anything, obviously, because what's what's my comeback going to be? <laughs> like, oh, yeah, well, Eagles won the premiership. Like, what? Yeah. Anyways, now I can make fun of them and they can't have a comeback, except their comeback is they beat us in the derby, but that's not going to happen again. So. Yeah. You wouldn't want that to happen again, um, despite everything happening with Simo and everything like that. And an interim mm-hmm. coach coming in now for the rest of the season. Um, okay, so who are some of your favourite Freo men's or women's players? Um, Jeremy Sharp. It's got to be one oh, of yeah. my favourites. And Heath Chapman. They're my two top favourites. Used to be Andrew Brayshaw. Yeah, yeah. Um, mainly because I had a bit of a crush on him, but now I'm over no. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who, who hasn't had a crush on Andrew Brayshaw, seriously? Um, now I'm a bit over him. So I've gone to Jeremy Sharp and Heath Chapman. They're my favourite, and I just love the way they play. I feel they're very yeah. underrated. And, yeah, I think they're very good players. You just got sick with sick with the same one. Uh, it's time for something different now. Or oh, Jeremy yeah. Sharp only changed, yeah, but Heath Chapman's been there for a few years. But, uh, yeah, it's just one of those things, Hayley, was it? Yeah. Um, I guess um, I loved the way he played as well. He was a very good player. But yeah. He's he's got like the recognition that he deserves. Like everyone knows, Andrew Brayshaw was a good player. Oh, I just want to sort of like support the not the underdogs, but the people who are mm-hmm. kind of pretty good. Mm-hmm. I reckon they're pretty good. So, yeah, I, yeah, I've I've seememed to have a trend with that, Haley. But I've sometimes had some bad luck. Now you mentioned about you know like kind of having favourites of the not the less. Oh, they are. Oh, maybe not less than you know the non top five ten players all the time. You go for some guys in the middle tier or younger ones that aren't, you know, getting games. So like that, I had a trend to do that, Hayley, and um, they generally got bloody delisted. So I've kind of now kind of tried to steer away from that. Or, or when I went a bit higher up the ranks towards middle tier-ish, they get traded somewhere else. So it's like, I can't uh, fucking win. Uh, it's just, yeah. Uh, so I've... If this happens anymore, I'm never having a favourite again. So now my favourite from last year and this year is Philippo. It was St Kilda's top 10 oh, pick yes. last year. Yes, 
He's pretty good. I like him as well. My brother's yep. was Lockie Schultz, and then obviously oh, you know, yeah. he got taken to Collingwood. So, yeah. Yes, he did show indeed. Now, yeah, Philip, I, I actually met him. I actually saw him today, believe it or not, at St Kilda's training oh. and just spoke to him for a little bit. I, I've known him for a little bit through this channel. Um, had him on a couple of times, and then we've just chatted ever since pretty much. Um, yeah, so it was nice to see him today. But, uh, yeah. Um, there's a catchphrase I, I use. It's all aboard the Filippo train. That's it. I always got to bring these catchphrases, Haley. Again, because every video I do, like when I repeat the same things, it started, you know, like clicks and then everyone starts saying it to you or even out in general, like that catchphrase alone, like I've been saying it for two years and now I've got people that I know that do YouTube and stuff as well. And they're using that on their own thing. Now. I'm like, and I, and someone did that on the weekend. I'm like, said to this person, I said, Gee, oh, where'd you get that from? Oh, yeah, you. I'm like, okay, I thought so. <laughs> That's good, though. I'd be showing that off. That's pretty cool. Ah, absolutely. Um, and it's, there's plenty of other catchphrases I've got sticking with other people, but that's another story for another day. Um, so have you ever had any AFL or AFW player interactions, Haley, as a fan? If so, were they memorable or forgettable? Um. Well, at the Waffle W Awards night, I had... I was freaking out a little bit because Daisy Pierce came up to me and she gave me oh, yes. a handshake and she's like, well done, mate, congratulations. And I was like, oh, my God, she's literally talking to me. And then Emma yeah. Driscoll came up to me. She's one oh, of my favourite yeah. players for Frio. Mm -hmm. She came up to me, gave me a big hug and told me I'm amazing and everything like that. And I was like, I was like, thank you so much. And I literally was so shocked. I was so excited by it. I was fangirling a lot. But yeah. Do not blame you one bit. I'd be doing the same thing. No matter who it is, I'd be doing the same thing, especially if you know of them, of them or you like them as a player or whatever. I'd be doing the exact same thing and you wouldn't be alone there. Um, but, okay, so how cool was it? Like, as you mentioned, you talked about, like, you are on that stage doing all this and all that with the league and then you got more added pressure. You just won. You've got people watching. You're on a live stream of people watching it and then – that as well <laughs> yeah it was it was it didn't feel real if i'm being honest my adrenaline was just so like like high like i had so much adrenaline and i was like oh my god that just happened and then when i woke up in the morning i was like daisy pierce shook my hand emma just school gave me a hug i was in front of all these people what the hell was going on i was just like <laughs> wow like it felt real the next day that night it did not feel real at all like it felt like it was a dream <laughs> It's it's so cool because you know you mentioned about that like two days prior, a day prior, Haley, you weren't have, not at that level had done any of that, and then just like that, that happened. Mhm. Mm yeah, it was. It's pretty crazy how fast like things can happen. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. That's right. Now, actually, now we talking about you talking about fangirl moments, Haley. I can't remember who the player was, so but I've interviewed too many people now. I've forgotten. Someone had the proof how much they loved Andy Brayshaw. They, I mentioned to them some of their most prized possessions, which I'll ask you next. Um, and they said one of their most prized possessions was their celebrity crush, Andrew Brayshaw. And they had an Andrew Brayshaw card, and they said it's one of their most precious things they own. Yeah. Um, I literally, I don't even know where it is. I literally so have a big poster. Uh -huh. Andrew Brayshaw poster, and it's signed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I have one of those. And nice. my boyfriend got me a jersey from the lock free locker room sale. Oh yeah. Um, with a signed one. Um I for I don't know, it's literally in here, but I forgot. Oh, so bad. It was it's not um he's not like a popular player, but mm -hmm. I was, like it it's it was literally in the free rooms. It's been touched by a Freya player, so I'm I'm pretty happy with it. There's like a I think there's even a signed Edgy Brayshaw jersey in there. This is oh, nice. my boyfriend's cupboard, so I don't want oh, to go in there. <laughs> Fair enough, especially on here. Uh, that's all good. Um, all right. So, um, game day superstitions, Haley. Do you ever have any game day superstitions? Um, not really. My main one is to have my energy gels. They're probably mm -hmm. like placebo effect, 
Like, I feel the same as I did last year because this year this is the first year I've started taking them. But I think it just gives me a little more confidence that I have good energy, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I love just, like, getting – like, we love to get around each other before the game. So our favourite thing about getting around each other is we do numbers at the start before everything. So our friend yeah. Luca – our teammate Luca, sorry, just friend, yeah. she's teammate – in the middle <laughs> and she's yelling all the numbers and we sort of, like – like we yell it back and it really gets us up and excited and like we all like love it and I think that's one like we do that before every single game and in, at half time as well. Uh, nice, that's good. Um, if you were to oh, actually, uh, I've had a complete blank. Ah, uh, that's right. Where do you see yourself, Haley, in the football side of things, or just in general, in the next five years? What do you want to be doing or hope to be getting into? Um. I'm not too sure. Like, I want to go to university, but I genuinely don't know what I want to do. Um, I'm doing Cert 4 in fitness at the moment, so that will help me get into uni to do something along, like, the sports side of things. I was yeah. looking towards being a sport teacher, mm -hmm. but I don't know if I'll be able to deal with kids for five days in a row. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. My yeah. brothers are hard enough to deal with, but... Um, <laughs> That's tight. Or, I've got like a little business at the moment. Oh, yeah. Um, like a jewelry business. So I'm hoping that's going to escalate in the future. I did see yeah. that. Tell us about that. Give it a plug. Oh, well, my boyfriend surprised me with it because he knew I actually have an obsession with jewelry. Like my yeah. personality is what jewelry I wear. So yeah. Like, um, like I love jewelry. And one day he surprised me with this big packet of just these earrings, all the same earrings. I'm like, what the heck is this for? And then he showed yeah. me Instagram and he goes, I just started a business for us <laughs> called Curl yeah. Jewelry. And I was like, oh, my God, like, this is so cool. <laughs> Didn't think much of it. But now it's really escalating. We're getting orders, like, every day. Oh, and nice. Yeah, it's actually going really well, all because of him. He's the one who puts in most of the work. I just do sort of the social media because he doesn't want to oh. be seen as a boy who does jewelry. It's like, you can't tell anyone <laughs> to do this. <laughs> No, I get you. Uh, good, good man. Helping both of you out and doing well. So yeah. that's good. Um, yeah, it's it's good. It's good to see a lot of people, Haley, these days are getting around uh, merch of some form, whether it's just shirts, jewelry, in your case, everything like that. It's good to see it's expanding. It's not just you know the big companies that you hear about on TV every bloody ten seconds and ads on. It's good mm -hmm. to see more people get around it and and. It's good, good to hear about something different all the time and not hear any typical Kmart ad or a big W ad or some crap like that. Yeah, I agree. They get boring. Yeah, they do. Same repetitive old shit time and time again. Um, mm -hmm. What nicknames do you get? I should ask you this earlier. What nicknames do you get, Hayley, that you like or dislike? Um, no one calls me Hayley on the field. They only call me Bitters. <laughs> Bitters because of Bitterfield. Bitters yep. is my go-to name. I don't think, even at school, because I go to school with Bree, she does not call me Hayley, oh, yeah. she just calls me Bitters. And everyone's mm -hmm. like, who the heck is Bitters? Oh, oh, it's Hayley, it's Hayley, because we call her Hayley, we call her Bitters on the field or whatever. So, yeah, all my footy friends, my coaches call me Bitters, no one calls me Hayley, but, yeah. I've fallen victim to calling people. See, I generally ask that question towards the start, but lately I've just... <laughs> randomly left it towards the end and in a scenario like yourself happens like so i call you your first name just in general right and then someone's like says what you said like yeah no one calls me I'm like damn it i should have said that at the start so okay fine. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I want to see that nah, fine. Uh, the rest of this i'll call you bitters no Haley, no more haley has gone it's not uh, bitters here all right so, now jumper number what jumper number do you wear is there any significance behind the jumper number that you wear um, I wear number four. I wore mm -hmm. number four last year. There's no really significance. It's just um, eight is my favourite number. Yeah. And I wore number eight at the start and I was very happy. And then mm -hmm. I was like, God damn it, I'm wearing number four. But then I realised my boyfriend wears number four and four, mm. four is eight. So I think that's a significance. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. My number's four. His number's four. Four plus four is eight. So I think that's the only significance it really has to me. I didn't choose my number. I just got given a random number. Mm, nice. A happy coincidence that it matches with your boyfriend, as you mentioned then. So that's yeah. that's nice. Um, all right. So most – I should have said this before. Most prized possessions that you own, Haley. what is 
those items that you cherish the most? Um, the item that I cherish the absolute most in my life is my teddy, Bruce. No. Um, Bruce? Like, the other day, Lene came over and she threw him across the room. I got so angry at her. Damn right. Like, don't touch him. Like, you keep him here. You don't touch him. Whatever. I've had him since I was, like, a baby and he used to yeah. be so fluffy and I've hugged him so much that he's literally disintegrated. Like, he's just um, hanging. hanging <laughs> he's my prize possession. I bring him everywhere. Mm. You, these teammates of yours, they've just got to learn that there's things that you don't do and that you don't stuff with your teddy bear. That's a big no no. No, no you don't. And she um, knows that now because I gave her a lesson. I told her. Good, good. That's good. Now, fun facts about you, Hayley. Uh, there I go. Bitters that people may not know about you. Um, yeah, so fun facts about you that people may not know about you. Um, fun facts about me is I have um, a brother that's 16 soon, very yep. soon. Mm -hmm. And then I have a little five-year-old brother. And everyone mm -hmm. tells me, was your brother an accident? Was your brother an accident? No, <laughs> everyone, my brother was not an accident. He was planned. Yeah. It's just um, a big difference because my mum just thought all of a sudden, oh, wait, I kind of want a third child. So mm -hmm. she just had a third child. <laughs> very <laughs> random, but very happy. Yeah. And then yeah. also, um, I don't know, there's not really much fun facts about me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like part African. Everyone wonders why I'm so tan. So I'm, not right now because it's winter, sadly. But, yeah, um, yeah my mum's from, like, Africa. Okay. No one really knows that until I, like, she's from Seychelles, which is in Mauritius, but, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And by the way, anyone that says about the accident thing, they're idiots. Um, so. Yep. I've had like too many people ask if he was yeah. an accident. He is not. Yeah. Can't believe people would actually generally ask that. That's pathetic. I but, know. Uh, they have, they're very brave to ask that. I would never ask anyone that. Yeah, no, that's well. Um, now, Defenders Haley, up. Uh, now oh, there I go again. Bitters. Okay. See, this is just it just, just happens. So I'm just gonna act like I never said that. All right, so defenders bitters. I feel like they deserve a bit more love than what they truly get, as you would know. Uh mids get all the recognition. They that's what the brown low is for. They're for midfielders, right? And forwards got the cold. And the rucks get recognized in brown low votes these days too. So do you feel bitters that uh defenders deserve their own official title of an award as well, just like the other positions have? Yeah, I was. We were literally talking about this the other day. I reckon backs should have the Golden Fist Award. Yes. Um, yes. like the best spoils, because yeah. our backline, as you probably know, we got Zuby kept Zuby to zero. So obviously our backline yeah. did a pretty, pretty darn yeah. good job. Yeah. So, um, yeah, our backline is amazing. Like we, they're like the reason that we keep our. Uh, opposition as low as we can like they are well i don't know what we do without them to be honest they're amazing um obviously mids help a little bit tiny bit but it's mainly <laughs> the back line that work back out and they do an amazing job and yeah i reckon they deserve an award golden fist award or yeah, yeah. So, at least something like they're the reason yeah exactly that right cool. so they definitely, definitely are. Now, I should have brought up this teammate question earlier, but who are some teammates uh, bidders? Damn it, did it again almost. Um, some teammates bidders that you feel like fly under the radar a little bit and don't get talked about as much from a public point of view as you feel that they should? Um, I'm going to say two people, and they're actually in the back line. Yeah, go on. Um, JK and Paige. Mm -hmm. They are – oh, my gosh. <laughs> I've seen that happen. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know that just happened. That's um, actually pretty funny. Is it your birthday coming up or something? Is no, that what I it is? Every time I do this, I do the piece. Oh, yes. Um, balloons sometimes fly up. I don't know why. Yeah, there yeah, it is. <laughs> I don't know why, but I think it's something to do with my phone. That's all right. Don't worry. Mine did that once, and I'd never seen it before. It was within the last few months. I thought, what the hell is this? I don't think it was during an interview, like, oh, it doesn't really matter. I don't care. But that's funny. I, I forgot what you were saying now. So, oh, are you no. talking about the Yes. Yeah, JK and Paige. Yes. They're just, like, whenever, um, like, the opposition will kick into their forward line, like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Then there's JK. She's got the mark. Push back, whatever. 
Like they're about to kick a goal. Oh my gosh, there's Paige. She's just clunked it right in front of the goal. Whatever. Okay. And they're they're so they're such smart players. They always they switch and they move it down yeah. to the fat side of the ground. They know what they're doing. Yeah, they're very, mm-hmm. very, very smart players. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what you want. Now, if you were to yeah, this is gonna be hard bidders to pick one player, just one. If you were to pick one player, this now this can be league players, this can be Rogers players. If you could name one player that you see the potential in to get to an AFW list, who is that individual? Um, there's actually quite a lot. Like this year, some girls have really impressed me. But yeah. I think it's pretty obvious, Mia Russo. Oh, um, well, yes, of course. She is a superstar. Actually, I do look up to her as well, even though she's younger than me. But her, I think it's her confidence as well. Her confidence is just amazing getting in there, playing mm-hmm. league. She did it yes. so easily, fits in with all the others, even stands out most of the time. Um, mm. Yeah, I can see her going very far in the future. Yeah. Good answer. That's a good one. Uh, all right. So now I do have a few more for you, uh, Bitter. So I do really appreciate you coming on. So the f- one of the ones here I'm going to go for here. Now you're in charge, Hayley. Um, I'm not 1,000% confident if this is how it works in the Rogers like the uh, league, but we have like 20 minutes and the clock doesn't stop. Is that a thing? That's a thing in Rogers too, is it? Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Okay. Do you like that? And do you feel that that should not be a thing? Because it kind of gives people within rules because it's a rule, but it gives the chance for people to exploit the rules and kill time when you're behind. I mean, you just won like every game, so it didn't really matter. But, you know, how, mm-hmm. how do you feel? Do you feel like the quarter length should just like stop when there's a stoppage or a goal out of bounds, whatever it is? Yeah, I would like that to happen. Um, mm-hmm. Just because some people just take so much advantage of it. Um, yes. Like I remember I was watching a game oh. – Last year, I think it was the semi final. No. Um, and or close to the end of the season, I'm not sure, I forgot, but yeah. someone they were winning, and this one player injured themselves. Oh, yeah, the good old injury bullshit. Yeah, yeah they yeah. injured themselves, and then times that uh, that other team had so much potential to score mm. and win potentially, but they someone injured themselves from the other team and had to get. Carried off, hurt their ankle, whatever, something, not sure. But yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I know, of course. I mean, sometimes it may be genuine, but you know, sometimes it is. And sometimes they'll lay there. Like, it's strategic. Now, it's in the rules. So, I mean, really, it's not their fault. It's, yes, they did it. But that's why I'm saying the rules shouldn't be there. There was a game for Swan Districts bidders at the start of the year in the league side. Don't know who the hell it was against. Um, So they had the ball, they had a mark. About 65, 70 out from goal, they were losing by like two points. A minute and a half to go. Uh, the opposition team had a player, as you said, injured, right? Laid on the ground for a good minute and a half, waited for the time to go. And once that siren went, they slowly got up a couple of seconds later. It's like, no. that's just, and like, they, clearly no one got the distance because no one in any league could kick 70, you know, confidently in one kick. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, I just thought, now nah, that's rubbish. And plus, there was a minute and a half still. Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, that's that's ridiculous. And that it just exploits the rule and people can cheat it in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, I don't love that. But anyway, whatever. Now, right, I've got a few more for you. So if there's is there is any other rule, Haley? So you, if you're in charge, you're the CEO for the day. Is there any rules you're adding or removing outside of that? Um, I think... Maybe um, for women's, it's like, oh, there was a new rule in grand final for some reason, which I did not like, is with boundary throw-ins, they would have to throw it the direction of the centre bounce circle. Oh, yeah, yep. It was never like that, and all of a sudden it was like they'd have to do it on this weird angle. I just thought it was so strange, and it was just so useless like it, there was no difference at all it was so useless and it just made me mad because i would go to set up where they were going to throw it and then they changed the angle completely to change it to the center circle and it was just a very useless rule that i would change it was so weird yeah I, 
Yeah, that is completely odd. Is there any outside of foot interest bidders that you do have? Outside of footy? Yeah. Um, not, well, sort of. I used to be into volleyball. Oh, yeah. Um, I loved volleyball. I did it with my old school. Then I moved, and then the school that I'm at now doesn't do volleyball. But I've okay. been sort of getting into paint by number, the ones from Kmart. Um, oh. I love just sort of painting, and obviously I can't paint from scratch. I'm not that talented. I just like to paint by number. I think it's very – and I'm proud of myself. I hang them up in my room. Good. <laughs> but, yeah. Good that. That's good. Any favourite TV shows or movies that you have? Um. Stranger Things. I've this is like my third time watching the. I'm literally watching it right now. I'm onto my third season for the third time. I just love it so much. I've never loved a show so much. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's good. I'm like that with some shows. You know, you watch it once and you're like, nope, I'm going through it again. Season one again, yeah. or whatever. it's just like you know, repeat it over and over and over again. But if you know, if you like it, well, you like it. You wouldn't be doing it if you didn't like yeah. it, right? So yeah. it is what it is. Now. Last two. So um, what's something someone does at the club, Hayley, that you can't stand at all? Whereas leaving rubbish around, it's been flat out annoying. What ticks you off? Um, I'm going to have to go with Lene again. She, <laughs> this is disgusting, Lene, if she ever hears this ever. Yeah. And we all tell her to stop doing it. She will go like this when she has snot in her nose on the field. Oh, she'll blow yes. and she'll put it onto the ground. And we're like, I literally, I think I gagged once because I was like, that is so disgusting. We're at training and I was like, I'm never, ever going to eat ever again. I thought it was Yikes. So gross. Well, it's funny you say it. It's funny you say that, but then she was in your house not too long ago. Yeah, stuffing around. So, yeah. I mean, it's like a bit of everything. But, oh, well, tongue in cheek, that's funny. Good one. All right. Now, the last one before I let you go is, so if you can map out a dream scenario for self-bidders in an ideal world for this start of next season, heading into next season, how would you love it ideally to pan out for yourself? Um, I would like to do, obviously, well in my first – I do want to play league. I reckon I want to get selected for league. That would be cool. Um, and I also want to get, like, even recognised by, like, a state team or something, at least. I don't know, because um, I would love the opportunity to play state. I think that's my next biggest goal other than league. Yep. Um, because lots of my friends that I know play state, and mm -hmm. just I think it's such a good opportunity and I'd love to play if I'm good enough to get selected, I'd love to play for the, you know, the Swans. Yeah. That's right. No, that, that's very good, Haley. I mean, uh, there we go. But it's, um, you know, like, yeah, it's like, you know, it's great to see team and team, but, you know, obviously that's something that I tell a lot of the girls that I've had on that are either in that squad or, like yourself, wanting to be in that squad. It's like, you know, you put your best foot forward, you never know what happened. Hey, you, you couldn't do more. Than what you did this year by you know performing how you did and winning the league being effort and i'm sure that'll get people noticing you a lot more and um you know it could happen soon it could happen next season you know never give up on that um mm -hmm. chance bitters and then uh you'll see what happens it's been a real pleasure having you on and uh all the best with everything and good luck at that bnf night and uh yeah if you, if you do what you do send it through thank you thanks Very for having time. me on i really appreciate nice. it nice. you too thank you